Today, we're going to define the emitter size of our particle system. Let's go. I'm excited for today's video because today we're going to start seeing the first indications of particle behavior in our shader. So for the last couple of weeks in this series of videos, we've been making a, a particle system with a shader. First, we started with a mesh that's a stack of cards that looks like this. Then we made all of the planes face the camera with our billboard node that you can see here. And if I connect this up, you can see that our planes are facing the camera just like that. And then last week, we used this hash 33 subgraph here to give each of our planes a random color. So these are all the steps that we've done so far to lay the groundwork for creating our particle system. Today, we're going to tie all of these foundational elements together and create something that will start to behave like a particle system. If you haven't seen the previous videos in the series yet, I'll link the playlist down in the description so you can go back and catch up. All right, so let's get started with what we're going to do today. First of all, uh, in Unity, let's open up our blackboard here and add some parameters. And we're going to do this in Unity first, but in just a few minutes, we'll switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to do it there as well. Okay, so the first parameter that we need is a vector three and it's called emitter dimensions. And we're going to use this vector three value to define the size of the bounding box where our particles will be allowed to spawn. So the next thing that I'm going to do is open up my graph inspector and I want to give my emitter dimensions parameter a default value. And in this case, I'm going to give it a default value of three meters. So I'm just going to type three, three and three for X, Y, and Z. And that's going to say that the dimensions of my particle emitter are three meters cubed and particles can spawn anywhere inside that three meter space. All right, let's just turn off our inspector now so that we have plenty of space to work. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is grab these nodes here. Um, so this is my vertex color node. And what it's doing is bringing in the black and white values that are assigned to um, my stack of cards here. And then we're using that vacuum, black and white value, passing it into this hash function, which then generates a random value for X, Y, and Z, or for red, green, and blue. So those are our hash random values. I'm just going to slide this over a bit. And the values coming out of here, out of this hash 33 node, are between 0 and 1. But when I spawn my particles, I want the center of the emitter to be uh, at 0 instead of on the corner. So the next thing that I need to do is multiply these random values by two and subtract one. So I'm gonna add a multiply node here, and there it is, it's multiplied by two. And then I'm gonna add a subtract, and by default, the subtract is one. So now I'm multiplying by two and subtracting one. And what this does is it's changing the range of these random values coming out of my hash three three. Right now, the random values are between 0 and 1. And by multiplying by 2 and subtracting 1, I've shifted that range. So now they go from negative 1 to 1. And I have kind of the, the pivot point of my bounding box uh, right in the center of the box instead of on the corner. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is bring in our emitter dimensions. So there's the emitter dimensions parameter that we created. And I need to multiply our emitter dimensions uh, by our random values. So I'm gonna drag this out and add a multiply node here. And then I'm gonna connect this subtract node to the multiply node. So we're multiplying, so we have these random values, one for each particle. And then we change their range so that the random values are somewhere between negative one and one. And then we multiply those by the dimensions of the emitter. 
And the last thing that we need to do is tie in our billboard node here. So this represents the position of the particles. And to each of those uh, positions, we're going to add the emitter dimension that we've created here. So I'm going to create an add node and then connect up our emitter dimensions to the add node. And then we're going to pass this value into our vertex position. Now I want you to pay attention to what happens over here in our preview window when we connect up our vertex position. All right, so I'm just going to zoom out here so you can see a little bit better. Maybe I'll turn off the uh, graph inspector for now. And so whereas before we had a stack of cards uh, that were all lined up, now all our cards have shifted to different locations within our emitter dimensions um, uh, bounding volume. So they've all moved to different locations with this, in this volume. And you can see as I move the camera around, uh, our particles are actually behaving like particles now. Um, this is this is super cool. We can see some great progress that we're making. Um, so uh, just to kind of review what's happening here, we're bringing in our grayscale values, uh, multiplying by 255 to convert those to an integer, then passing that into our hash 33 node, which generates these random color values. We're not actually using them for color though, um, because we're using them for how far away from the center we want each of the planes to move. So then we take those random values and expand their range to negative one to one, and then multiply them by the emitter dimensions, which is like the maximum amount away from the center they're allowed to move. And then we add them to our billboard node that we created uh, last week. And if we change this emitter dimensions parameter here, let's open up our um, inspector again. If we change this emitter uh, dimensions parameter, we can control the distance away from the center that the particles are allowed to move. So, you know, if, if our value is really small, we can just kind of like squeeze them all into one spot like this, or we can give them emitter dimensions that are slightly larger, uh, maybe 0 0.2. So now you can see like the larger my emitter dimensions are, uh, the more these particles are allowed to spread out to fill that space um, of the emitter dimensions. So that's pretty cool. Now there is one last thing that I want to show you today uh, in this process of creating our particle system. And that is this scale parameter. So our billboard node here has a scale input. And we created this last week, but uh, I didn't actually show you how to use it, so let's do that. Um, so I'm going to bring up the inspector again, or I'm sorry, we're going to bring up the blackboard. And I'm going to add two more parameters. I'm going to add a particle start size and a particle end size. And we'll use these parameters to control the size of the particles at the beginning of their lifetime and at the ending of their lifetime. So let's go ahead and drag these parameters in. And just for now, let's give them a default value. Let's start our particles out small. So I'll give the particle start size a value of 0 0.1. And then let's end them up really large. So maybe I'll give them a particle end size value of two. So during the lifetime of the particle, it's going to be expanding from 0.1 up to two. Now, in order to get that expansion to happen, we actually need to blend or lerp between particle start size and particle end size. So we're going to add a lerp node here and we'll connect our particle start size and particle end size up to our lerp. And then we'll connect our lerp to the scale value on our billboard node. Now you'll see that immediately when I did that, our particles shrank down to really small. So each of these are the value of 0.1 right now, which is the, the default particle start size that we've created. If we want them to show the particle end size, we have to set this T value of our lerp to one. So if I set it to one, now you can see that our particles have scaled up 
to that particle end size, which we defaulted to two. So we've made them larger. Okay, the trouble is right now in the way that we have our shader set up, we don't actually have a particle lifetime value. That's what we're gonna do next week. And we'll end up connecting that right here to our lerp node so that between the end, so that be, between the beginning and the end of the particle's life, uh, it can scale from our defaults of 0.1 and 2, uh, but we don't have that value created yet. And so just temporarily, so that we can see what happens, what's happening, I'm going to create a slider node here, and we'll connect this slider to the T value input. And now, and this is just as an illustration so you can see how this works. But as I slide this slider, you can see that our particles go from our values of 0.1 up to 0.2. And this input scale value here on our billboard node that we created is functioning correctly to transition our particles between their small uh, spawn size or beginning of their life and their large uh, size at the end of their life. Okay, pretty cool. We're making some great progress here. Today, we ended up with kind of a cloud of particles um, that are being created and um, scaled up so that they fit within the emitter dimensions that we've created for them. And we have three different parameters that we can play with. We have the emitter dimensions, which defines the space that they can exist in. And then we have our start size and end size parameters that defines the scale or the size of each individual particle. So yeah, like I said, we're making some great progress. Next week, we're going to start creating the particle lifetime parameter. And I'm going to show you how to uh, give these particles uh, a lifetime so that they can actually animate between the beginning and the ends of their life. Pretty cool. We're making some great progress on our journey here. All right, let's switch over to Unreal, and I'll show you how to make this uh, these same additions here uh, in that engine as well. All right, here we are in Unreal, and just like we did in Unity, we're going to set up our emitter dimensions parameter, and then we're going to connect all of the foundational elements together that we've created so far. So if we're looking at uh, the shader that we've created up until today, we have our vertex color coming in. We multiply by 255 and add 0 0.5 and then pass those results into our vector noise node here. And this is what's generating uh, these kind of random looking colors for our particle card stack. So in order to proceed, the next thing that we need to do is take the range of values that we have coming out of our vector noise node and convert them to the negative one to one range. So in order to do that, we're just going to multiply by two and subtract one. So now as a result of these two math operations here, we have a value that um, our color values here are between zero and one. And these this operation here times two minus one gives us a value that is between negative one and one. Now, the next thing that we need to do is create a parameter that's going to define the dimensions are of our emitter. So I'm just going to hold down the three key and click, and that's going to give me a vector three. Now, this is a hard coded value. It's not a parameter yet. So I'm going to give these um, a default of three, three and three. Actually, mm, because Unreal uses uh, centimeters, if I want to use, if I want these to be three meters, I actually need to make this uh, default to 300. There we go. All right, so I've got a uh, emitter size parameter of 300. Oh, and I need to right click on this and say convert to parameter. And the parameter wants a name, so we're going to call it emitter size. And you can see that it's got the default values set to 300, 300, and 300. So this defines the size of the bounding box that the particles are going to be spawned and, and live inside. 
So the next thing that we need to do is take our range here that's between zero or the it's between negative one and one and multiply it by our emitter size. So we'll add a multiply node and connect up our emitter size parameter. And so now we have uh, this range of negative one to one multiplied by our emitter size, which means the particles can be anywhere inside this space uh, defined by um, our emitter size parameter here. Okay, now Unreal is a little bit different from Unity in that values that are passed in uh, to move vertices around need to be in world space instead of object space. You can see this is called, you know, world position offset. It's kind of implied uh, or explicitly pointed out in the name. So right now uh, we're in object space, but we need to transform uh, into world space instead. So I'm going to add a transform node here. And when it first comes in, it's set to tangent space to world space, but I actually want it to go from local space. Um, local space is what Unreal calls, uh, and in Unity, it's called object space. So we're going to go from local space to world space. And now we're going to tie this together with our billboard node here. So we can take the position that's coming from our billboard node and add it together with uh, the value coming out of our transform vector. And then we can connect the result of this up to our world position offset input pin. So I'll just connect these together. And now you can see that our particles have spread out to fill the available space that's inside um, this volume that we've defined by our emitter size. So as I rotate around, you can see that because of our billboard node, the particles are all turning to face the camera. So no matter which way I rotate here, each of the particles is looking directly at the camera and they've spread themselves out um, based on the random value that they're getting uh, from our vector noise node. So you can see kind of the, the darker values that they're getting are down here and the brighter values uh, move the particles up to the, the opposite corner. So that's pretty cool. You know, we've got these particles that are sort of um, vaguely behaving like particles would. We've got kind of this random cloud of particles and we can use our emitter size parameter to control how how closely packed together they are or how spread out they are. Like, for example, if we set uh, one of the dimensions of our emitter to zero, now you can see they're all kind of spawning on this flat vertical plane. They still have three by three meters in uh, the Y and Z vectors, but because we've set uh, the first component of our emitter size to zero, they're kind of f all flat on this X plane. So we can set these uh, emitter per our values to whatever we want, you know, just to shape um, the way that the, the particles are clustering. So that's pretty cool. Okay, there is one more thing that I wanna do, and that has to do with this scale input value on our billboard nodes. We can actually define um, sizes for our particles uh, over their lifetime. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna right click here and we're gonna add a new parameter. So here I'll add a scalar parameter and we're gonna call this particle start size. And let's give it a default value of 0.1. And this scale value here is in meters instead of in centimeters. And so I'm gonna set these parameters up to be in meters instead of centimeters. So there's my first parameter. And then I'm gonna add another scalar parameter. And this is gonna be our particle end size. So I'll type that name. And then we'll give this one a default value of two. And now we need to blend between these two values. So I'm gonna add a lerp node. 
There's our linear interpolate, and we'll lerp between the particle start size and the particle end size. Eventually, um, after next week's video, we're going to have a value to plug in here. This is going to be the particle's uh, lifetime value, but we haven't actually computed that yet. And so for now, we'll just have to type this in manually to see the results. So I'm going to plug the result of our lerp into the scale value. And now, um, because our alpha value is 0 0.5, we're halfway between 0 0.1 and 2. So let's, uh, let's give it a value of zero for now. So you can see our particles are at their particle start size value, which is 0 0.1. But then if we take our alpha value and give it a one, now you can see our particles have scaled up to our particle end size value. So depending on the value that I pass here into the alpha, I can set the particles to be um, somewhere between the particle start size and the particle end size parameter. Okay, so this is pretty cool. We have our vertex color coming in, and then we convert that to these random color values using our vector noise. Right now we're passing our vector noise here into the emissive color, um, but this is not really that important. It's just so we can visualize these random values that each particle is getting. Um, but eventually we're going to uh, uh, replace these uh, random color values with something that's more interesting. And that'll be later on in the series. So then we're taking our, our random color values here and changing the range of them from negative to negative one to one. Then multiplying by our emitter size. Then transforming from local space to world space. And then we're adding our billboard node here, which we talked about last week, that makes all of the particle cards uh, turn to face the camera, like no matter how we rotate things. So we're adding that value in and then passing that into our world position offset. So now we have parameters that can control our emitter size so we can spread our particles out or cluster them closer together. And we can also control um, the size of each individual particle, whether they're scaled really small or scaled really large. So pretty neat. We've got something that's starting to uh, look like a particle system. Yeah, now, like I said, next week, we're going to compute the lifetime of the particles and do some animation over the lifetime of the particles so that they start out small and get large or start out large and get small. Uh, so be sure to come back next week to see that as we continue to progress further along uh, toward creating a full featured particle system. Hey, thanks for tuning in everybody and for watching the tutorials. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.